Hi friends, it's Miss Nicole from Moon Township Public Library. I hope you're having an excellent day. And today's preschool story time is actually going to be on Arctic land. So we're going to talk about um, some people who live in Arctic areas. We're going to talk about some Arctic animals. And we're also going to talk about some Arctic transportation. Um, so I think the Arctic is really interesting. And uh, one way that you guys might get more information on Arctic is Molly of Denali. Now, she lives in Alaska, and this is a PBS Kids TV show. So if you've not seen the show, um, that's where you'll find it. Uh, we also have um, some materials in our system. We've got this book here and then I believe some DVDs as well, as well as whatever else is in our entire library system. So feel free to check those out if you find uh, Arctic living interesting. This is Molly. She's a child living in Alaska and uh, teaching us a little bit about the land and the people and the culture. And it's a really great show. So, we're actually going to start off with a story about an indigenous tribe called the Inuit tribe who lives in the Arctic areas of Canada, which is really cool. Did you know there was any Arctic in Canada? No. Did you know that there were any indigenous people that lived in Canada? Maybe not. But there are. The Inuit tribe has been around for a very, very long time, and they have their own amazing cultures and lifestyles that should be respected and admired today and every day. So um, this story is actually a traditional story that they used to tell uh, by mouth from generation to generation, and somebody decided to go ahead and write a book on it. So this story is called The Walrus and the Caribou, and this is by Meka Harper and illustrated by Marcus Cutler. The illustrations are gorgeous, but I personally love learning about the culture and the heritage. I think that's amazing. Here we go. A long time ago, when the world was taking shape, a little woman began breathing life into the world. Her name was Gook. How does an animal take shape, she thought. Where does the head go? What goes on the head? Ears? Whiskers? A snout? First came the walrus, breathing in, breathing out. Gook created the walrus from her seal skin parka. That's her seal skin jacket. Whiskers and wrinkles and funny dancing flippers. The walrus had huge antlers too. Every time it swam, it would overturn the kayaks in the water. The antlers were too big. The hunters were upset. Once again, Gook breathed in, she breathed out, then she created the caribou from her seal skin pants. There's the caribou butt. That's pretty awesome. She's making that all from her breath. Big hooves and hair everywhere. A large snout and tusks too. Those are the tusks. Every time it saw a hunter, the caribou would charge him with its tusks, creating much trouble on the land. The tusks were too big. The hunters were, again, upset. What would happen if the walrus and the caribou traded different parts of their bodies, she thought. She called Quagasik, Quagasik, come come to the walrus and the caribou. Pulling the tusks out of the caribou's mouth, she gave them to the walrus. Then she pulled the antlers from the walrus's head and gave them to the caribou. There, she said. Remembering the trouble the caribou had caused, she called, Quagit, Quagit, come, come. As punishment for hurting the hunter, she kicked its forehead flat and its eyes bulged. For being so rude, we will stay away inland, she, scal she scalded. That means she yelled. 
That must have hurt, right? That seems kind of mean. And ever since, whenever a caribou smells a human, it is afraid. If your intentions had the power of creation, what animal would you make? Would it have t feathers or a big furry tail? Imagine all the possibilities. And there's the caribou chasing the man again. Isn't that funny? I love that story. I think it's really, really cool. I think it's silly that that caribou is chasing the man around and the hunters around. Uh, but I think it's a really amazing story about um, how some of the creatures were created. And in the very beginning of the book, it says, Versions of the story can be found across the Arctic, from the La Labrador Inuit all the way to Alaska. It focuses on the power of willing intentions into creation. I have loved learning traditional stories since childhood and was so lucky to have great stories in my family and in my community community of Iqaluit, Nunavut. My favorite memories are of camping on the land and telling stories in the tent. To this day, that is still my favorite place to hear and tell stories. The traditional origin stories of Inuit are plentiful and powerful and always leave you learning something new. I hope this book does just that. So there are Inuit people all over the Arctic, not just in Canada. And they all have these amazing stories and these traditions, just like, um, just like everybody has, right? All kinds of different cultures have different stories, different ideas, different cultures, and different lifestyles. I think it's really awesome. So now we're going to go ahead and move into a story called Tough Tug. And this is about a tugboat in the Arctic, right? So here we go. We're actually going to go ahead and um, show you the map where it is, okay? And then um, this is by Margaret Reed Mac McDonald and illustrated by Rob McClurkin. But here's the map. We've got Seattle, Washington down here, and we've got Alaska right up there, right? That's an Arctic place. Weld and rivet, build a tug. Hey workers, make me strong. You sturdy steel so big waves can't break me. Prime and paint. Paint and prime. I am red. I love red. Don't forget my name. Tough tug. Slide and splash, slide and splash, launch day, here I come. Hooray, I'm floating, this is fun, wait till those boats see what Tough Tug can do. Forward, reverse, forward, oops, forward, good. Forward, reverse, now backward, no, look out behind. Speed and stop, speed and stop, hey, watch me speed. Oh no, oh no, can't stop. Little tugs need to know how to stop. I was just practicing, but watch what I can do. Swirl and twirl, twirl and swirl. You tugs are bigger, but you can't do this. Push and pull is what tugs do. Practice that, said the big tug. Push and pull, pull and push. Look, Barge, I'm pulling you. I'll tow you to Alaska, my first job. Ready, steady, steady, ready. Being a tug sure is hard work, but not too hard for me, cause I'm a tough tug. Chug and tug, hey, Arctic tug. I'm going to Alaska too. Want a race? Sure, little tug. Tug and Tug. Race and run, run and race. I can catch you. I'm Tough Tug. Bye bye, little tug. Nice try. I'll see you in Sitka when you get there. Sitka's a city in Alaska. Slow and stop, slow and stop. 
You beat me to Alaska, Arctic Tug, but still a long, long way to Anchorage. And now we have to cross the open sea. Anchorage is in Alaska as well. Heave and haul, haul and heave. The open sea is rough, waves are high, wind is cold, but I'm not worried. I'm Tough Tug. SOS, a tug in trouble. SOS, a tug in trouble. Arctic Tug lost power. Engine stopped. I have to leave you, Barge. I've got to help. I'll rescue Arctic Tug and come right back. Don't worry, I can do this. I'm Tough Tug. Heavy seas, heavy seas. Arctic Tug, I'll pull you. I learned how. It's hard to keep my course in heavy seas, but I can do it. I'm Tough Tug. Thanks, little tug. You towed me back to port. Safe and sound. Safe and sound. No problem, Arctic Tug. A tugboat helps its friends. Now back to pick up Barge, who's waiting for Tough Tug. Crash and splash, big waves, big waves. A long way back to Port Barge. I know these waves are high, but Tough Tugs don't give up. And on your tug. Rock and rest, rock and rest. Good job, you earned your name, Tough Tug. This trip was hard, but I did not give up. I left Barge safe in harbor, and now we rest. Another job tomorrow for Tough Tug. And there's our map again. There's Sitka, Alaska, and there's Anchorage, Alaska. Do you see how far away they are? And Seattle, Washington is all the way here. How crazy is that? Tough Tug went all that way into the Arctic to help Big Tug, right? I think that's pretty awesome. All right. So we're going to go ahead and read one more story about the Arctic. And this story is about Arctic animals. And it's called Pup and Bear. And this is by Kate Banks and Naoko Stoop. Pup and Bear. Whoosh! Went the great gray owl swooped down, screeching hoo hoo. The Arctic wolves knew that the big freeze was on its way. They took shelter in a snowdrift, and they listened to the fierce wind holler and roar. They watched the snow blow in spirals, wrapping the world in a fluffy white coat. But then the wind's bitter cold breath turned warm, and the sun appeared. The big melt came, and one, lo one lone pup found itself on a sheet of ice, spinning out to sea all by itself. The pup slid into the water. He swam and he swam. When he reached land, he burrowed, he burrowed into a snowbank. He was tired and wanted his mother. The pup closed his eyes and fell asleep, listening to the throb of silence across the still landscape. It was quiet. He woke to the feel of a cold nose against his fur. The smell was familiar. It was a polar bear. You are not my mother, said the pup, flattening his ears against his head. I am not your mother, said the polar bear, but I can cuddle you and keep you safe, she said. The pup was shy and frightened. Aren't you going to eat me? Polar bears eat wolves. Not this one, said the bear, shaking her head. Climb on my back and I will take you to my den. The pup stretched a paw forward cautiously then he climbed onto the polar bear's back, and they crossed the tundra under the watchful eyes of a trio of baby puffins learning to fly. There are some more arctic animals. Back at the den, the polar bear licked and cleaned the pup. I am not your mother, but I can feed you and keep you warm. The next day, they set across the wintry tundra. The tundra is the uh, type of 
biome. So that is the type of land they're living on in the Arctic. It's very icy and cold and frozen. When they spotted a walrus with long, sharp tusks, the polar bear bellowed and chuffed. Where are we going? asked the pup. I am not your mother, but I can show you where to catch fish. They passed a snow goose perched on a nest of eggs. They sniffed the trail of a seal as he tried to outsmart them. And they stopped at the water's edge where the fish and the lemmings came and went in the wondrous wheel in the wondrous wheel of life. And the sun shone down on the crisp crackling snow and the polar bear rolled in a snowbank. Come on, she said to the pup. I am not your mother, but I can play with you. But when the pup tugged too hard on the polar bear's fur, the bear growled, I am not your mother, but I can scold you. And then she nuzzled the pup and tickled his tummy. Tired at last, the pup curled against a bear, and they napped, listening to the wind whimper and sigh. The earth turned round and round, and the big freeze came, followed by the big melt, until at last the polar bear nudged the wolf, who wasn't a pup any longer. I am not your mother, she said, but I know it's time for you to go. She nuzzled the wolf one last time, and the wolf nuzzled her back. Then he walked out into the wide world. The wolf howled to the midnight sun, which glowed on the horizon, where day ended and night began, and he was answered by the cry of another wolf. Soon, he was leading his own pack across the frozen tundra. Then one day, the wolf came upon a polar bear cub huddled in a snowdrift. Where is your mother? asked the wolf, but the cub didn't know. The wolf sniffed the cub and rubbed its fur with a wet nose. You are not my mother, said the cub, cowering. I am not your mother, said the wolf, but I can cuddle you and keep you warm. Aren't you going to eat me? asked the cub. Wolves eat polar bears. Not this one, said the wolf, shaking his head. Climb on my back and I will take you to my den. The polar bear clambered on the wolf's back. But I am not your mother, said the wolf but you can stay with me until you're big enough to be on your own. And the wolf led the pack back across the tundra, along the path that went round and round in the wondrous wheel of life. The end. How beautiful is that story and those beautiful illustrations, those pictures. I hope you guys enjoyed those stories and learning a little bit about the Arctic land, the Arctic people, and traditions, and uh, a little bit about their transportation system. And again, if you guys are interested in learning some more about Arctic um, land, traditions, lifestyle, go ahead and look into Molly of Denali. This is a really great series, especially as we're moving into wintertime pretty soon. Um, but there are many other books that you can look into, nonfiction, fiction, whatever suits your fancy. So I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you real soon. Bye, guys!